morning. We are so glad that you are able to join us online. Um, we are going to start with a worship song this morning, but let's go to prayer first. Father, we, we pray um, that you would just meet us right here in this space and um, meet all of our people wherever they are across time and space who are watching this. Um, Lord, we're doing something new. We're facing something different that we've never done before, and we need your help. Um, Father, we just pray that you would um, just pour your Holy Spirit out on this church and on your entire church around the world today um, as we learn to minister in new circumstances. And Father, we just pray that you would be glorified by everything we do. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, uh -huh. 
I appreciate our girl. That was a a last minute decision. We decided um, can't have church without worshiping the Lord and praising God. So um, as weird as it is preaching to an almost empty sanctuary, it's probably a little weirder than even singing to them. So I appreciate the girls doing that um, and everybody else who was here to help. Nathan is here. Um, doing our video. In fact, he's waving at the back of the camera right now. <laughs> that doesn't work. I'm really glad our tech guy <laughs> doesn't understand the concept of that, but that's cool. Um, and Nathan and I have been practicing social distancing. I don't let him get six feet near me, even when there's not a global pandemic going on. So, so we're good. Um, and other than that, it's just our family here. Um, but we know that you guys are joining us online um, and it's, it's good to know that it's good to know um, that our family is still out there our church family um, and we are even if we're not physically together that we are gathering together in the best way that we can so um, what helps is knowing that you're watching um, it makes this a little a little less weird um, send your prayer requests in the comments, um, tell each other hi, talk to each other, ask questions, share your heart with each other, um, like the video, share the video, heart the video, do all of those things. Um, your church needs you right now, and I need you right now. Um, I need you to participate, I need you to stay connected more than ever before. Um, we need to still, still be the church. Um, we are no longer meeting in person for any services. Um, or events until the CDC tells us otherwise, basically. Um, I understand the future looks uncertain. Um, I understand everything would be a lot easier for us if we had even an end date, if we, we could see um, the light at the end of the tunnel. We don't know how things are gonna, um, how long things are gonna be this way. We don't know how long it's gonna be before things are back to normal, but we do know that eventually they will. Um, we do know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We do know who is on the other side of that. So um, while, while we're waiting, um, we're just going to do whatever we can for the greater good. We're not canceling church. Um, I said that earlier this week in a video, and I, I think it's worth saying again, the church is not the building that I'm sitting in right now. The church is not the two hours a week that we get together. The church is the people and you can't cancel people. Um, we are still very much here. Um, we're looking for ways to love people and to serve people and to be light. Um, and we're still very much together in spirit and on mission. Um, and, and we're doing what we can, not just to save lives, but also to save souls. Um, that's our mission. That's our job. So in the meantime, we have some really cool stuff going on online. Our children's ministry place is a great place to be. Um, if you have kids and you want them to participate, send me a message, send Gracie or Emily a message, um, and get your kids added to that children's ministry page. We keep it separate, um, just to keep the kids a little bit more private. Um, but it is, it's a great way for them to connect. It's a great way for them to stay in the Word, stay connected to their church. Um, there was a video contest this week. Um, Gracie and Maisie posted their, sorry, they posted theirs on the, um, the actual group page so you can watch. Um, but Sabria is the winner this week of the $25 gift card. Yeah! of the story of Noah's Ark, including props and costumes. Um, Gracie and Macy did a very unique conversion of the story of baby Moses in the river. Um, Sadie and Colton told the story of Mary and Joseph, including some special behind-the-scenes footage of their marital problems. Um, and our friend Jordan Bigler tuned in all the way from California with a very interesting take on how Jesus multiplies much needed supplies in a time of shortages. So um, all of that is available on our children's ministry page. And later this week, we have some more um, fun things planned for the kids. So please point them to our Kidman page. Your kids are going to be online. Um, they're gonna be on 
Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and all over the place anyway. So use um, that screen time um, to your advantage and point them to our Kidsmen page and have them um, get connected on there and see some of the cool things that Stephanie and Emily and some of our volunteers have planned. We are also using the app called Zoom. Gracie is going to um, post, Gracie or Peyton, one of them will be posting in the comments um, so that you can, you can easily see what the app is called. Um, it's a, a different way for us to connect online outside of Facebook. So we have one Zoom call this past week. Um, and we plan to start using it more frequently in the next couple weeks. I encourage you, download the app, make a profile, it's completely free, um, and then just watch on our page and be ready to join in on our calls. We're going to try to do banding together that way this week and possibly also Bible study on Wednesday. Um, it's pretty simple to use. I say that knowing that not everybody is at the same same tech level, but if you have problems and um, you get into it and you can't figure out what's going on, message someone. Um, we can we can help talk you through it. Stephanie posted a really cool graphic on the page that kind of explains how to use it too. So um, let us know if there is a way we can help you do that. We also have a YouTube channel. Um, we would love for you to subscribe to subscribe to it. Nathan runs our YouTube channel. Um, and if we get over 100 subscribers, there are some different cool things that we can do um, that we're not able to do right now, like live stream on YouTube. Um, so subscribe to it, click the little bell, that will tell you whenever, um, we'll send you a notification whenever we have um, a new video online. And the girls will also link that up. It's, it's um, the Gathering PKB on YouTube. So. Um, we are still delivering food boxes and lunches to families who lack transportation or are unable to get to the schools for pickups. I cannot stress to you how important this ministry has been this week um, and how much I appreciate everyone who has given selfless, selflessly to make it possible. Um, the Warehouse Church blessed us yesterday with a big donation um, that helps stock our pantry. Um, and some items to help pack our lunches for this week. And that was an awesome display of how churches can work together. Um, they've always been really good to us. They're kingdom minded, which I love. Um, and I'm grateful for any time churches can come together um, because we are one church. Um, many of our friends and people in our church family have donated financially, um, have brought in items for lunch, have helped deliver lunches. Um, and, and we served over 700 lunches this past week and gave out more boxes of food than I can I was even able to keep track of. Um, for a tiny little church, that's a pretty impressive feat. Yes. And it proves that when you trust God, he will always oh. provide what you need. Um, mm -hmm. It didn't all come from within the walls of this church, um, but you know we, we put the need out there in the community and, and Christians. Um, responded in love, and that is it's just awesome to see. We appreciate um, those of you who continue to give your tithes and offerings to the church. Um, even though we're not meeting in person, I understand that a lot of families right now are strapped. We have people who are out of work. We have people who own small businesses who are um, concerned about what the future looks like. So I encourage those of you who are able to continue to give um, to keep doing that. We, you know, we still have a ministry here. We still have a mission here. Um, we have a, a way to give online through um, homelandchurch.org backslash donate. Um, we haven't finished the process of changing over our website yet, so we're still kind of running off of the old site. Um, or you can mail checks to P.O. Box 3180, Parkersburg, West Virginia, 26103. And um, both of those will be in the comments um, for people. So um, remember, you know, to, to continue to give as you are able um, to help us support those who aren't able right now. So I hope by now, I haven't really had a chance to read the comments, um, but I hope by now you've had some time to share prayer requests in the comments. Um, I can't see them yet, but other people who are watching can. And I am going to read those comments after after the video um, and pray for each need specifically. But right now, let's go to the Lord um, and then we'll get into the Word. Father, we come to you 
um, this morning, Lord, with humble hearts. We are, we are in unknown waters, Lord, and we are, we need your help now more than ever. Uh, Father, I, I pray for each request that has been mentioned in the video today. Um, I know the biggest need on everybody's minds right now um, is, is just the uncertainty of the world right now. Um, that, that we need to know that you are still in control. Father, I pray that um, you would comfort people, that you would give us peace, that you would give us wisdom, um, Lord, that you would protect people, pr protect our families, protect our healthcare workers, protect um, those who are on the front lines of this, Father, and that you would just help us to do our part um, to, to bring it to an end swiftly and um, to get things back to normal, Father, but that while we wait, you would grant us patience. Um, that you would help us to, to just be calm um, and, and just to do our part. And Father, we pray for those um, in our church family who are, um, who are sick, who are financially stressed right now, um, and just all the different concerns that are going on. Lord, I don't know them all, but you do. Lord, you are already in each, each of those situations. You are already in our tomorrow. Um, and I just pray that you would, your will would be done um, in everything. And Father, as we turn to your word now, I pray that you would do what only you can do. I pray that you would open our hearts and open our minds, um, help us to hear your word and to, to hear your message to us through your word, Lord, and that we would be able to apply it to our hearts um, and use it to change our lives. And Father, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so I want to talk to you this morning um, about making the best out of a bad situation. Um, we find ourselves in a pretty scary situation right now, and it seems like every day it gets a little bit crazier. Um, but tough situations are not unique to the church. Um, when you think about it, the first church, the one we read about in the book of Acts, they navigated through some pretty tough situations too. Their challenges looked a lot different um, than the ones we face today. They faced extreme persecution, um, they, they oftentimes landed in prison or were stoned or beaten to death. Um, but over and over, we read about the church in the first century. We see that no matter what obstacles they faced, no matter what was in front of them, um, they did whatever they had to do to advance the gospel. And they, they made the best out of a bad situation. The Apostle Paul was no stranger to bad situations. Um, in the time he, that he set out to spread the gospel message around the world. He was imprisoned several times. Um, he was shipwrecked. He was bitten by a snake. He was beaten. He was flogged. It makes um, having to stay inside your house seem pretty mild by comparison, right? Um, but whatever was happening in Paul's day-to-day -day life, he never took his focus off of his mission, which was sharing the gospel, um, because it was that important to him. The word gospel literally means good news. And Paul knew what we know, that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just good news, it is the best news. Um, the gospel of Jesus Christ tells us that God loves us so much that he took the penalty for our sins. Um, he took the punishment that we deserve because it was the only way that he could be with us. It cost us absolutely nothing to receive that. Um, the only thing required of us is that we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. And that is the greatest news of all time. And Paul wanted to tell as many people as he could in as many places around the world as he could um, before he died. And he never wasted an opportunity. This morning, um, I want you to look at, with me at a passage in the letter to the Philippians. Um, so if you, if you are reading along, I'm going to read it to you. But if you want to read along, um, we're going to be in Philippians chapter 1. When Paul wrote this letter, he was sitting in a prison cell in Rome. Um, so look at with me, Philippians 1, starting in verse 12, and I'm reading out of the CSB. It says, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually advanced the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else, that my imprisonment is because I am in Christ. Most of the brothers have gained confidence in the Lord from my imprisonment, and dare even more to speak the word fearlessly. To be sure... Some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. These preach out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, 
thinking that they will cause me trouble in my imprisonment. But what does it matter? Only that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is proclaimed. And in this I rejoice because I know this will lead to my salvation through your prayers and help from the Spirit of Jesus Christ. My eager expectation and hope is that I will not be ashamed about anything, but that now, as always, with all courage, Christ will be highly honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, to live is Christ and to die is mm. gain. That, my friends, mm. is making the best out of a bad situation. Not only was Paul under arrest for sharing his faith, he also had people there in Rome who were falsely claiming to be Christians and doing whatever they could um, just to make his punishment worse. But he counted it all as a win. He didn't care because he saw what it was doing to advance the gospel throughout the world. There were Roman guards and people who had eyes on Paul um, because they knew he was in prison for his faith. They knew he was willing to die for his faith. When you have a message that you believe so much that you're willing to die for it um, or willing to go to prison for it, people will listen to that message. People will be willing to hear you. Um, and rather than complaining about the fact that he was in prison, Paul chose to, to praise God for the silver lining um, that the gospel message was still being spread. We are facing serious challenges um, as individuals, as a church, as a community. It's worldwide. If you were like me, you're probably feeling like your head is spinning. Um, there seems to be another challenge thrown at us every single day. <clears throat> How can we echo the words of Paul here and make the best out of a bad situation? Can we say, what does it matter only that in every way Christ is proclaimed? I've had many opportunities this week um, to talk to some of you over the phone, over messenger, via text, in video conferencing. Um, there are a lot of different feelings that we're wrestling with right now. Um, confusion, shock, worry, loneliness, restlessness, boredom, fear. But by far the worst, um, the thing that I keep hearing the most um, is that we feel powerless. It feels like this virus has taken our power away. We have to be separated from each other. Um, we have to close our church doors. Many of you have to change the way you work or you're temporarily out of work. Our parents are all learning how to homeschool and if the means are any indication, it's not going great. Um, we have new rules and new instructions coming at us almost every single day um, and there's nothing we can do about it. So we feel powerless. But I wanna remind you this morning that we are not powerless. Yes. No matter what we don't have, we still have the gospel. And that's the greatest tool we have in our tool belt. Amen. It will not be contained by a virus. It won't be contained by a lockdown. The flame that was lit by the Holy Spirit over 2,000 years ago will not be extinguished because of social distancing. Um, we still have the power that is the gospel. The good news that has been changing lives since Paul was locked in a prison in Rome, it is still changing lives today. And like you, I have moments of fear and frustration and powerlessness, um, but I keep reminding myself that God is still in control and he is still working. Amen. I can't wait to see what he's going to do here. Um, I believe it's going to be something big. I can already see him empowering preachers and teachers and pastors to um, to take a hold of new skills and, and adapt the way they do things um, to kind of grow the church online. I already see neighbors um, stepping up and loving each other and, and communicating in different ways. Um, and, and make no mistake, the gospel is still being advanced. There is a silver lining here. Let's take advantage of this difficult time in our life. Um, we don't know how long it's going to last. But for the duration, let's look for ways to advance the gospel. Let's continue doing the things that we've always done. Love people, serve people, connect with people, share the gospel with people. We have to do those things in a little bit of a different way right now, um, but we still have the power that is the gospel. I'm going to invite you um, to say a prayer with me in a, in a minute, and wherever you're watching, um, I'd like you to join in this prayer that we as believers would, would make the best out of a bad situation. Um, that we would grab a hold of every opportunity that we have here to tell people about the love and mercy of God. There are people in your circle, people in your family, people that you work with, people that you love um, who are scared right now and they don't have the hope that you have that is in the gospel. 
um, share that with them. It is the greatest gift that you have right now that you can give to anyone um, is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you have questions about your own personal faith, um, your own walk with Christ, maybe you've never made that confession of faith before um, and you're looking around the world right now thinking, I have got to have something to hold on to. Um, I have absolutely nothing more important to do today than talk you through that and help you to understand how Jesus can change everything for you, um, just the same as he, he did for me. So reach out and get in touch with me or get in touch with another pastor or another believer um, and let us show you the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's um, pray and we'll, we'll get in, we'll cancel the, or we'll finish this video up. Nathan's going to put it up on YouTube for us. Um, and, and please stay connected. Don't, don't separate yourself um, from your church. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now, Lord. We are so thankful for the example of Paul. We're thankful for um, the example of all the apostles. Lord, they were separated too um, when they were scattered. Um, and you used that to your advantage. You used that to spread the message throughout the world. Um, Lord, and I believe you'll do the same now. I believe you'll take this time um, where churches are, are forced to, to scatter and to distance themselves, and I believe you'll use it to your advantage. Um, I'm excited, Lord, to look back and see what you do here, what you do in this time, how you grow your church, um, and how you minister to your people. Father, I pray um, that we would be a light in the darkness, that we would bring hope to a world that feels hopeless right now and that we would share your power with people who feel powerless. Father, I pray that you would empower us, that you would pour your Holy Spirit out on your church um, and send us into the world um, to share your message. And Father, I pray your protection and your guidance um, over all of us as we, as we move through this. Father, I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.